As a girl growing up in a small town in Alberta, Canada, my family was very poor. And I found my escape from the poverty and the chaotic environment of my childhood in the pages of National Geographic magazine. But traveling wasn't something that my family did because we didn't have any money for that. After I graduated from high school, I moved to Calgary and I worked three jobs and saved up my tips. And when I was 19 years old, I bought my first plane ticket to Venezuela. And that began my love of travel. And I spent the rest of my 20s traveling around the world, going to over 50 countries, a lot of them places that don't attract a lot of tourists, places like Syria and Afghanistan, Iraq, Pakistan. I think I saw the world as wide open to me through my 20s. Nothing bad had ever happened to me, and you never think that it will. I think what the world shows you is what you believe to be the truth. In 2008, I had been living in Baghdad, Iraq for about seven months. I was working as a freelance television journalist. But I had been following the news story that was coming out of Somalia, a story of a country that has been devastated by over two decades of war. And so in August of 2008, I traveled to Somalia for what was meant to be a one-week work trip into the country. And on our fourth morning there, uh, my photojournalist companion and I were kidnapped by a group of teenagers with AK-47s and that began our 460 days in captivity. And to survive that experience, I had to learn how to escape from the often brutal reality of my day-to-day -day existence. And so I was able to do that, to close my eyes and to retreat to what was my house in the sky, a place where I could connect with my family, where I could imagine what my life would be if I were to receive my freedom. After spending 460 days as a hostage, I was released and returned to my home in Canada. When I was in captivity, I had a very clear understanding that my teenage captors were products of their environment. I made a promise to myself that if I made it out of there alive, that I would do something to change that. A couple of months later, I founded the Global Enrichment Foundation, which is dedicated to creating positive change in Somalia through education and aid initiatives.